Hello everybody, um, I won't be long today because I want you to get on with the work but today you're going to be planning your Greek myth and you're going to be using the hero and the monster and the object and any gods you chose uh, on Friday in your plan today. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, outlines that you can use and then you can go off and plan it using whatever format you're most comfortable with, whichever format you would like to use. So here is a basic idea of where the plan uh, of what the plan could look like. So you can see um, to start with, we've got this the hero or the heroine and a god has set them a quest or a task of, in this case, maybe killing the monster that you created. So you've got to choose uh, your god or gods uh, from the list that already exist. And I've linked to the website again that I had up on Friday so that you can choose from that list. So don't make up the gods themselves. So maybe think here, where does your monster live? Uh, in other words, is this going to have to be a long journey by sea? Decius had to do. So is it going to be a long journey? And Theseus had to do, of course, as well. Um, what does your monster look like? What's the monster doing? You, you know what it looks like already from your from your lesson on Friday. Uh, what's the monster doing? Why does it need to be killed? So in the case of the Minotaur, obviously it was killing Athenians by eating them. What does your what's your monster doing? Why does your god want it killed? You need to think about who the people are, who the settings are. OK, so you can make up the god, but not to so make up the monster, but not the gods, because uh, that will make it more real. Then remember, we are adapting our writing to be in the style of a real Greek myth. Uh, so maybe your god gives them your magical object to help um, defeat this monster. So think about the features of your monster and what your weapon or your object needs to have in order to defeat that monster. So your object and your monster have got to uh, sort of match here. So the object has got to help in defeating that monster somehow. So think about the fact that Perseus had a reflective shield, which helped him with the uh, killing the Medusa, the Gorgon. So he didn't have to look at her and therefore get turned to stone. You could think about the fact that Theseus was given a ball of string to help him um, you know, get out of the labyrinth again. So that the object has got to match. So then you've got to think about the hero setting off on the quest. How does he or she travel? It's not going to be by car, is it? So is it going to go by sea, which, of course, a lot of the Greek uh, journeys would have been because of all the islands and the coastline. Would it have been by sea? Are they walking? Are they on a horse? Are they on their own? Does he take he or she take someone to help them? Uh, so then get into your, think about your climax here. So this is a great opportunity for tension. And we're going to be talking about that more in our life lesson tomorrow. Um, short sentences lay out feelings. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, so this is where your hero might find the monster. There's a fight. Uh, the hero defeats him. And then maybe the hero returns home. Is there a happy ending? Remember, we, we learned that a lot of myths do not have happy endings. Look at the end of Theseus and the Minotaur. And here are a lot of the themes that we've discussed, we've discussed already. We've got betrayal, jealousy, love, maybe between a god and a mortal, maybe between two gods. You've got your magical objects, monsters, heroes, punishments by the gods, a sacrifice from maybe from your hero. Not always a happy ending. Heroes, uh, sorry, allies and enemies, allies are friends, allies and enemies. All these complex family relationships, death, tasks, quests, tests demigods, so lots of things that are included. So that's one way you could think about it. It doesn't have to be a hero being told to kill the monster by the god, but that's quite a good one as a basis if you're not sure what else to do. OK, here's another way you could think about planning your myth in this sort of flow chart here. So the last one was by Paragraph Grids. This one is a flow chart. Uh, so you've got describing your setting, describing your hero, then thinking about the dilemma. What is the problem that needs to be solved? You'll need to read all these carefully. I'm just taking you through it quickly. Um, so what have they been asked to do to help with? Is it from one of the gods? Why have they been asked to help? The quest, so the journey, where does your hero go? What do they see on their journey? The journey itself is probably not going to be um, plain sailing, if you pardon the expression. So is there going to be a storm at sea? Is um, is maybe Poseidon will come up and stop them and will 
sort of stop them getting through and they've got to get past him. Maybe a, another creature comes and bars their way. What special powers or gifts does your hero receive? So this is the object. I would maybe have that before they set off on the quest, the object being given to them, of course. Then what happens next? How's the journey going? Do they meet anyone on the way? Where do they meet this mythical monster? What happens? How do they, um, where do they find them? Then the conflict. What does the monster look like? The powers and weaknesses it has, how they're going to defeat it. And then the resolution at the end. So you could set it out in a flow chart like this. You could set it out in a story mountain. So you have your beginning, uh, your build up, going up to the climax, the fight with the monster and going down the other side again. You could have it as a, um, a sort of a journey map. So you write things that happen along the journey on a sort of a like a river, like a picture of a river and write things that happen alongside. Um, so I don't mind how you plan your myth, but that's what you're doing today. You're just doing that basic plan. Think back to when we did the planning for um, your the game story, your Jumanji story, where you had that paragraph gig, didn't you? But today I'm going to leave the style of the planning, the format of the planning up to you. You can decide. I would suggest that you stick to the idea of uh, the god asks the hero to help kill the monster, gives them something to help, and then they set off on their quest. That's my suggestion. It doesn't have to be that if you think you could, you've you got another idea. But a lot of Greek myths, if you think about Perseus and Medusa, if you think about Theseus and the Minotaur, it is the hero setting off to, to kill the monster. So that's quite a good idea. And you've already planned your hero, your monster and your object. So it would make sense that that's the format you use. But if you're desperate to do something else, that's OK, as long as it is a Greek style myth. We are adapting our writing to that genre. So as long as it's a Greek style myth, that's OK. Tomorrow, we're going to have a live lesson where we're going to look at some uh, techniques we can use, um, especially in the conflict, in the build, in the um, in the climax part of the story, um, some techniques we can use to really hone in on improving our writing. And then the rest of the week, I'm going to let you loose on actually writing your myth. So don't start writing today. Just plan what's going to happen. OK, I'd really like to see those plans as well, just so I can check that they are in the right genre and you're not making it too complicated. OK, so don't make it overly complicated. So choose your gods. Use your monster object and hero from Friday and plot out what is going to happen. OK, and have fun with it. I'll see you tomorrow.